Mr. Menendez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Secretary, thank you for your service. I'm, I'm glad to see the President's budget has something that I've championed, which is uh, terms of minimum tax relief continuing. There's a lot of middle class families in the country, certainly in New Jersey, that are affected by it. I appreciate your comments on loan guarantees with SBI. I have a concern, however, that you know, if there are no loans, there are no loans to guarantee. And so we look forward to maybe working with you on that to uh, see how, in fact, that actually becomes something much more than a hollow promise. But I want to go after three things very quickly. I hope you'll work with me so I can get through them. Uh, one is the administration has proposed a modest responsibility fee on the largest banks to help pay back the taxpayers' TARP funds. The banks are objecting to this modest fee to pay back the taxpayers because of the supposed effects on lending uh, they claim and the cost to consumers. And at the same time, uh, many of these entities are paying some of the largest bonuses uh, to their own executives. So one is how do they reconcile that position? And secondly, uh, shouldn't we be looking after uh, banks pay back taxpayers for TARP in a few years? Uh, shouldn't we have those banks continue to pay into an insurance fund so that in the future, banks rather than taxpayers effectively will be paying if one of them fails? Uh, Senator, I don't think there is any significant risk that this fee, as we designed it, would have a negative impact on lending, partly for the reasons you said. Banks don't have to pass this on. Modest reductions in compensation budget would absorb the cost of the fee. We think it is absolutely essential to make sure that in financial reform legislation, we are meeting a basic common sense test, which is the government has to take risk of loss in the future to put out some future financial fire. We do not want the taxpayers to have to bear the burden of that cost. That's what we proposed to make sure that they don't bear a penny of cost under TARP for what we had to do in AIG or anywhere else. And we want to make sure in the future that taxpayers aren't, aren't on the hook to save large financial institutions from the consequences of their mistakes. And the question is how we do that, whether we do it prospectively or retroactively. It just seems to me that when we don't do it prospectively, we put the taxpayer out there and then we seek to recoup it. So that's something we look forward to working with you on. Secondly, I find it ironic that some of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle uh, that passed two and a half trillion dollars worth of unpaid for tax cuts uh, failed to pay for two wars passed an expanded drug benefit with an overwhelming Republican majority without financing one dime's worth, uh, have now rediscovered the issue of the deficit. Uh, and at the same time, I hear the same voices uh, clamoring on that saying, uh, let's fully repeal the estate tax. Uh, what sort of consequence would it be to our deficits if we fully repeal the estate tax? Isn't there a way to get about 98, 99 percent of all Americans exempt from the estate tax but not bust the deficit in the process and allow us the room for the middle class tax cuts that the President's budget calls for? Uh, Senator, we, what, we, what the President has proposed and we hope to work with you to do is to extend the rates and exemptions that were in place in 2009 and to extend, make them permanent. And we'd like, we hope Congress will act and make those changes retroactive to January 1st of this year. We think that's fair. It has, it captures only a very, very tiny fraction of all estates, between one and two percent. We think it's fair to do it that way. We don't think it'd be responsible that not means to do it that way. ninety-eight percent of Americans would never. Probably ninety-nine. Ninety-nine percent would never pay an estate tax. Only the wealthiest one percent would. Again, pay. what we're proposing to do is take what was in place in 09, make that permanent. And that gives us the and that is a lower rate and broader exception that would that, that would be in place if 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 Congress did not act this year because they would go up higher in uh, 2011. That gives us the opportunity to create absolutely no liability for about 98, 99 percent of Americans, and give us the opportunity to pursue the middle class tax cuts uh, instead of busting the budget. That's correct. But lastly, last year you and I discussed uh, my concern regarding a current uh, law tax loophole using reinsurance between affiliates that allows foreign-based insurance companies to ship their revenues offshore and avoid paying taxes. This is behavior that gives foreign insurers a significant advantage over U.S. competitors, which both hurts our domestic companies and blows significant holes in our tax base. So I'm pleased to see that this year's budget has a proposal to seek uh, uh, to resolve this problem. However, I note the approach uh, you all taken differs from the approach of the Senate Finance Committee, a discussion draft, and a similar bill introduced in the House. 
Could I get you to uh, uh, commit to me that you'll one work to make this a priority and have your staff work with those of us on the Finance Committee to find common ground to effectively close this loophole? Uh, yes, we, of course, we'd be happy to work with you on that. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman.